So this is the most important aspect of the fast when the heavens open. So from this point to the end of the fast, this is the most important aspect of the exercise. We've been watching for um, many days to be able to pick that moment when the heavens will be open so that we can make the announcement uh, because uh, that is when you can benefit maximally from the exercise. So I say to you that there's an opening in the spirit that we can take advantage of. Uh, so this is the moment. This is the time. Please uh, be diligent to ensure that you maximize the potential of this exercise in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you breathe upon your word again and cause it to speak to every heart. Uh, through it, let us find wisdom so that our steps can be adequately ordered in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated on your Bible to the book of uh, Job chapter 5, the book of Job chapter 5, we are looking into the issue of spiritual warfare as it affects the domain of the finances, the domain of the finances. Job chapter 5, beginning from verse number 19. There if you read the scripture that I'm about to read now, you will conclude that the issues that are being raised are circumstances. Circumstances. But I would like to press on you further to see that the issues that are being raised are not circumstances but personalities. All right. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Amen. And then he begins to mention the matters. He said, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And there is a temptation for you to think that famine is a circumstance. There is a temptation for you to think that death is an event. But I came to tell you that famine is a personality and that death is a personality. And these are agencies of the kingdom of darkness that have the ability to change circumstances around people, around nations, around territories. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. And thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. 
Now, destruction is also a personality. I know you know that one. You should know that one. That is another name for destruction is the prince called Abaddon. Are you there? Thou shalt be healed. Thou shalt be healed from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. A destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? For he, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. All right? And so we have a few personalities in that scripture that I would like us to look at. Uh, okay, we'll not look at it. We'll just, let us focus on the one that concerns us, okay? And that is famine. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this scripture is a package. It's a package of the extent of the insurance policies that God has over his people. When God decides to defend you, it is not as if the personalities that are capable of destruction are not within the ecosystem. You must labor to be a recipient of God's insurance policy in order for you to be preserved in the days in which we live. A part of the reason why we emphasize alignment with God is because there are sufficient destructive entities that are locking around. How many of you have heard of the devourer? Most of you are not conscious of the fact that it's a personality. And that the devourer can only respond to the Lord's rebuke. A pastor cannot rebuke a devourer. As anointed, as a man of God might be, the jurisdiction of his anointing doesn't affect the activities of a devourer. It is God himself that says in his word that he will rebuke the devourer because we walk in alignment. So these are destructive entities that are locking around. They have capacity to bring injury to humankind. They have capacity to throw you into confusion. They have capacity to ensure that nothing positive comes around your life. However, because of our partnership with God, the Bible reveals that there is an insurance policy that exists of which we become recipients and the blessing of preservation becomes our portion. I would like us to take a look again because we'll come back to verse 23. I'd like us to see if we can count these personalities that are hidden in this scripture. Can you go back to 19? He, should, he shall deliver thee from six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. You will find out, first and foremost, that there is a partnership between famine and death. He shall deliver in famine, he shall redeem thee from death. Um, you also see that there is a link between war and the power of the sword. My interest really is famine, even though the number of such destructive entities linger in that scripture, my emphasis is on famine. So first and foremost, what exactly is famine? Who can define famine? Okay, the class is unwilling to define famine. 
So I'm not, I myself, I'm not willing to so do. Amen. <laughs> All right, let me give you a snapshot quickly. Give you a snapshot. This is the introduction to a very long lecture. For tonight, I will not take so much because you may not know that issues that influence your finances are very deep spiritual issues. Very deep. When you find a man lingering in poverty, it may not just be that he's, he's not faithful to heavenly financial principles. The factors that can throw a man into confusion financially are wicked entities that are locking around and it's only the power that we derive from partnership with God that can afford us the blessing and indeed the blessedness of God's insurance policy. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, I'd like you to turn with me. In Genesis chapter 3, I'm not going to touch this scripture deeply because I want to touch it subsequently. There are deep issues that are trapped in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. But because it is in the center of a certain emphasis I intend to make subsequently, I will not touch it considerably. Because when we are done with the warfare in the domain of the finances, then we move to the warfare in the domain of marriage. It is when we come into the domain of marriage that we need to employ the services of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And in that day, I will be at liberty to explore all the metaphors that are hidden in the reading from verse number 1 to verse number 5. But I'll do a straight reading and go straight to the point and pick the points of interest so that we can see how spiritual things can affect the economy of a man. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, that ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Amen. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and sowed fig, fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. From verse number 8, we see God coming into their ecosystem, and asking a few questions, which are deep matters. But these questions relate more with the context of the family, and that's why I want to skip them. Let us go directly to the scriptures that capture the implication of their actions from the perspective of God's justice system. Are you with me? All right. And that will be verse number 
17. Genesis 3 from verse number 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat. First consequence, cursed is the ground for thy sake. The, uh, the issue that we are dealing with here, the issue we are dealing with here, is that the economy of a man is going to suffer loss. First of all, the Bible says, cursed is the ground for thy sake. So it is possible for a man's ground to be cursed. It's possible. And this man is laboring. He is diligent. You know, <laughs> in the teaching of prosperity, one of the things <laughs> that, 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 that is highlighted <laughs> almost always, is the fact that there is, there is this great need for hard work. And there are scriptures to prove it. And indeed, hard work is critical because God is not a magician and Jesus is not a money doubler. He's not a God that gives false hope. You must have read in your Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, beginning from verse 1, he said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord his God, and in his law, Doth he meditate day and night? He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever the hand now had work, he laid his hands upon to do is a prosper. So there is a coefficient of hard work in the metrics of prosperity. God does not bless people that are lazy. God blesses hard work, and that is scriptural fact. But as powerful as the insight about hard work is, you must understand that there is a situation where a man's ground can be cursed. And if a man's ground is cursed... It doesn't matter how much hard work he puts in. It will produce futility. Have you ever seen somebody and those that are into ministry, have you ever had to counsel someone that is extremely hardworking, comes from an extremely hardworking family, but there seems to be a limitation and the hard work does not translate to anything that is profitable? Then... It, it is highly probable that you are dealing with situations that are spiritual, that have turned the fortunes of these people backward. All right. The first judgment that came from God, and you must understand that the judgments that we are talking about here are consistent with the perspective of heaven's justice system. Don't worry, I'll break it down for you to pick the points in sequence, but I would like you to understand that before you start working hard, are you still with me? Like some of you might, you know, somebody sent me a text the other day, and the person said, wow, you make pastoring look easy. Amen. <laughs> if we exchange places, for two weeks, you'll be on drip. If you carry the weight that is upon my life and God has not trained you for it, I assure you, you'll be on drip. I woke up 3 a.m. yesterday. I mean today. 3 a.m. today. Huh? 3 a.m. 
Sometimes when I walk, I, am I, I wonder if I'm floating up. <laughs> you, no, you can't, you can't do what I do. If you don't have the grace to do it. And listen to me, a lot of hard work goes into it. And the hard work is part of what God sees. That it shows mercy. Alright, so hard work is critical. But, it, excuse me. If you are laboring on a ground that is cursed, your hard work will turn into futility. The issues we are talking about here is being able to detect a scenario where spiritual forces stand against your well-being and stands against the health of your finances. One of those possible situations that can be responsible for hardship, I mean chronic hardship, especially uh, this, uh, this hardship has the potential even to be family-based, is the presence of a curse on the ground. That's number one. Number two, because of the curse on the ground, this is the description of the life of a man whose ground is cursed. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life. It means that uh, being able to feed will become such a great body. If we look, for instance, if we look at the, the table of resources for those of us that are Nigerians, and we look at the table of resources, um, I study those things because once upon a time, I was in the oil industry. So we have a little idea of the resources that this nation has. Especially in terms of oil and gas. Because of our participation in oil and gas, we were also interested in our total mineral capacity. If you check the figures, the statistical figures we generate, which is supposed to be a picture of our commonwealth, from the perspective of the oil and gas industry, you will find out that it was not the Lord's intention whatsoever for any Nigerian to be poor. All right? So I don't know how many of you were able to fuel your vehicle full tank in the past two weeks. Because I hear that, uh, in fact, some of the prophets in the roundtable have given us some uh, insight that has to do with rise in fuel prices to a demonic level. Now, now the <laughs> you're not fully. <laughs> is it that we don't have the resources? That's why there is scarcity. That's why the prices are going up. Apart from having the resources, there are other factors that determine whether we function in goodwill or not. The other day, I was trying to itemize some of the things that we did wrong in the past as a nation that is responsible for our current situation. And I began to list the things, the emphasis as a nation that we had that was inconsistent with the laid out principles of God that is responsible for the reproach and the retrogression that we see today. As I started preaching that, a lot of my colleagues, pastors in the ministry, attacked me seriously. <laughs> so I, I said, all right, let me, let me leave it for a while until... The situations today are beginning to bite. And it will interest you to know that it will bite harder in the month that is coming, February. 
The resources are there. God made provision for us. But it's as if the provision has been turned to a curse. That it's likely that we would have had peace in some parts of the, the country now if there were no resources in those places. In a state like Zamfara State, it's a no-go area as we speak. And that is because in recent times, gold was found. So we don't even know which entity is sponsoring the hostilities in that place. We, we are not even in the know of that. So you will see that there was peace in the place until resources were found and then strange things began to take place. One of the indications that there is a spiritual embargo that is over the ground is that if situations that seem to hold a better possibility for the people arise, there will be a commensurate arrival of a situation that was never preempted, that has the potential of engulfing the fortunes that such a discovery has made. Those are indications of the fact that the ground has a legal pronouncement on it. And in such a situation, it doesn't matter whether there is a further economic discovery. It doesn't matter whether there is a, a, an injection of foreign aid. It doesn't matter whether the budget had been doubled. The situation is not likely to change because there is a verdict that hands over the atmosphere that is designed to enthrone the presence of famine. As apostolic people and missionaries, there are a few things I can tell you for free. When you come into a territory or you visit a family, you visit a village, you visit a people, you must understand that in that locality that you have gone to visit, there are two things that are hanging in the spiritual atmosphere of that place. The first thing hanging there are curses. Curses that have resulted from practices that have empowered the stakes, the market share of Satan in the land. They are hanging in the atmosphere. Those, those curses have been pronounced, but they have not been fully implemented because they need a human agent that will strengthen the issue, that will make those curses to be effectual, efficacious. It's just hanging. And also when you come into a territory, there are blessings that are hanging. If you are an agent of light, what you are doing and the infrastructure you are building is helping to facilitate the administration of the blessings that is hanging over the territory so that those blessings can become the operating system that drives the space. It is when the blessings become the operating system that drives the space that you begin to see results that are consistent with such things that God promised his people that they will see in their land because they are in alignment with him. Now, are you, are you with me? Never forget. Never forget that there are entities, personalities, with destructive capabilities to your economy. Those entities exist. But it's our, our alignment with God and with his principles and with his ways and with his wisdom that insulates us from their vengeance, from their ability to sting. Are you there? Right. So one of the things that can be responsible for the situation of famine, of hardship in an individual's life is that there is a curse in finding bread to eat. Listen to me. If you check your family very carefully, like my teaching, I'm, I'm trying to dig with you. I, this is an investigatory 
initiative. We are investigating something. By training, I was trained to be a prosperity teacher, a success motivational teacher. It was the Lord himself that restrained me from, in order to build the emphasis that I'm preaching to, I'm, I'm releasing to you. It took me 15 years post Bible school to build the emphasis of the gospel of the kingdom, which is the thread emphasis of the Bible. It took me 15 years to build that. And it was deliberate, it was conscious. And I've told you again and again, and for those of you that are old members, you must have seen my message or heard my message when I did a summary of the Bible and showed us that the Bible is a kingdom manual. It's a book that reveals God's administrative system in his kingdom. All right? So 15 years, I had to drop my Bible school notes. I had to drop my training notes. And I sat with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit led me to a few individuals, one of which was Watchman Nee. And I sat on his materials for 15 years. He, him and his disciples. And I drank that drink until it became mine. Hallelujah. As, are you there? Now, so, I took eight years to study the subject of prosperity diligently. Not just in the area that the experts that raised us, taught us. I wanted to, given the fact that I've been exposed to a, the good word of God, that means not just what you like, but the entire counsel of God in scripture. It took me 20 years to achieve that. Then, from that perspective, I now study the matter of prosperity. The things I'm teaching you today are part of my discoveries. It is possible for us to ignore totally people whose grounds are cursed and will keep prophesying on them every day and ignore the depth, the complexity of their situation and still claim that we are prosperity preachers when our message doesn't have power, the power to reverse the condition of faithful believers in the body of Christ that we know obey financial principles. It's possible for you to be such a preacher. And when you find people in poverty, your explanation of their situation is that they are short of the faith that is required for them to drive life at that level. Hmm. We know that excuse. But my intention is to open us up to the real matters that border this subject. Are you there with me? All right, so we have seen a situation of curses. And this is the implication of the curse. The first curse, the first implication is that it will be difficult for these people to feed. Second implication is in verse 18. He said, tons also and pistols shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So his menu has been downgraded just because of the fact that the yield of his efforts will continually be diminished as long as as that verdict is over his ground. And it doesn't matter if he changes jobs, changes business, learns a new skill, begins a new endeavor, except this matter is addressed. His new ventures and initiatives are not likely to produce any positive result. Are you still with me here? Now, I, I know some, some people are becoming sorrowful. But I do this for our good in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If we look carefully, he said, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust 
shall thou return. Can we put all of those matters into categories quickly? Hallelujah. So there is an allocation of sorrow. There is a downgrading of the kind, the quality of food. His menu is downgraded. The only thing that will be available to him are herbs. The herbs of the field. Real food will be lacking. Then the Bible speaks about sweat. That means struggles. And these struggles will overwhelm him throughout his lifetime. And it will be by the snare of these troubles that he will be brought to an end. Are you there? And if we check critically, you will find out that the, what is responsible for this situation is disobedience to the laws of God. Disobedience to the laws of God. Those symptoms, they are likely to look at them very critically. If there is any one of them that is suggestive of your situation, the reason for this lecture is so that we can sit back and conduct an investigation with God. You see, the, the thing about the new covenant that God has brought us brought us into by his mercy is that there is no situation that we are faced with that there's no solution in the cross of Jesus' death. But we must investigate and find out what is responsible for the matter. Then, we will begin to see the utensils available in grace to contend with that matter and to out smart that issue that is the basis upon which these strange occurrences find expression so in this case the what is responsible is disobedience and we have a few scriptures that seem to suggest that disobedience has such potency such potency of turning the tide and frustrating the work of our hands. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 14 to 20, we see how that disobeying the counsel of God puts us in a situation where we become vulnerable. Are you still with me? You know, I told you why we are doing this. So that you can run an analysis of your family quickly. All right? When you notice what is wrong, because if you see these symptoms, it means something is wrong. To know what is wrong, we'll need to ask the Lord. And, and since we are fasting, it's a good moment for us to go to the Lord and ask him what exactly is responsible for this hardship. And then the Lord will open your eyes. When he has opened your eyes, I will still show you through this Bible study ways by which we can outdo those circumstances that have been highlighted previously. Do you understand that? If your father will not do it, you can stand as a prophet of that family and administer the issues that we are talking about and turn the fortunes of your family by reason of your own personal pursuit. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. All right, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye will break my covenant. I also 
will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning age that will consume the eyes and cause sorrows of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it. Yes, go on. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. And they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain and your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield her fruit. This is what I'm talking about, famine. The potential that is captured in the land to support the faithfuls of God is withdrawn. And the moment that happens, a situation of perpetual hardship sets in. And the reason is because the commandments of God are despised and his covenants are not held in respect. Are you there? Because you notice that in the situation of Adam, what was responsible was an act of disobedience. And Adam, even God questioned Adam because he was the spiritual authority in the realm. Adam said it was his wife. God questioned his wife. The wife said it was the serpent. Nobody took responsibility for the act of disobedience. So God judged the serpent. God judged the woman. But the judgment that came upon the man was a judgment of famine. And the situation of famine can be replicated anytime the commandments of God are despised. There was this friend of mine. You know, when, when I was in Lagos, you know, in the oil industry, we met a lot of people so many people on a daily basis because you know we went into public public service so we met a lot of guys met a lot of people uh, most of them were very wealthy so i met this guy a young guy and he was also into oil business and all of that and he had made a lot of money and um In the line of duty, I gave him some prophetic words that came to pass. And then he came to look for me in my house. He came, you know, he knows my estate. So he came to look for me in my house and all of that. And he wanted to be close so that I could, you know, give him guidance so that he would not miss his wife. I told him, as powerful as you are now, there's something that can bring you down in a few years. It's called the woman. That the moment you start going around with women, other women that are not your wife, you have already signed a check for poverty. You have opened the door to famine. Well, the guy felt I was old school because he had so much money that, and I, 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 I never received money from him. I said, I'm well paid. If this our relationship is so that you can grow in the Lord, it's a good deal. And those days, because of the fact that our job was like 24 hours, and it, they gave us shoes to wear, safety boots. We had overalls to put on. So even if you buy a new jeans, you might not wear it for seven months. You need to see me those days. <laughs> you will not believe I'm the one. We had crash helmets to wear. We had our own kind of clothes. If you wanted to wear what I'm wearing, 
you just wear it in the morning. And if you want people to see it, walk around the offices. When you finish walking around, you go into your office, you put it off and put on our uniforms. <laughs> if you don't wear the crash helmet, you can come back with a broken head because of how the environment is. So, even when we earned money, there was nothing for us to use money for. Because if you buy a new <laughs> pair of shoes, you now put them on. Those were the days where we pushed 70% of what we earned to ministry. And the rest, 30%, was pushed home so that my wife and the people that stayed with us could cope. We didn't need money. Yes, I lived like that for very long. So he, the big boy, you know big guy, big guy. Had a, those days, this is my car that I'm riding now. There were few in Lagos. Very few. And the guy I'm talking about had one of them. There were like 20 pieces of that car in Lagos then. So if you drive that car, then, my God, you, you were just on the top of the ladder. So, but the guy loved God and he used to come. I, I told him, I said, young man, you are going to fall the moment you start looking around because when God gives you financial power, he has co-opted you into the kind of stewardship that is very meticulous. If you use your financial power to edge somebody out, it gave you comparative advantage and you use that to edge somebody out, God will require it out of your hand. It is for the purpose. If you see the way I dress those days in Lagos, if you see me, you will not believe I'm the one. What will you buy? Even the furniture you put at home. How many hours do you stay at home? The moment they plunge you offshore, you won't see home again. And you, were, you are going to walk in an environment of 100% risk. In fact, the reason why they pay us high is because you can die any day. That was the environment we were working. So, and people that were benefiting from the oil industry, oh my God, you need to see money. So I began to teach him the scriptures. First thing I hammered in his ears was that you need to be sexually pure. And then it will look like, what is, why are you having money? If you cannot take one woman here, you cannot call one in Abuja to fly down. I'm talking about a sector where the people are very discreet in their dealings with women, that they, they import women. It's not just Calabar, no, 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 no. You will not know that anything is happening. You import a woman from Liberia and she's in a hotel for one month. When he's done with that, import another one from Senegal. When he finishes with that, import one from Gambia. And the money is there. And the moment you begin to get used to breaking the counsel of God, I have seen mighty men fall like a pack of cats. Famine, I've seen it. And when I saw the potency of famine, I advised myself as a preacher that the day I'm being lowered into the earth, before I go, I will say there was no woman that I touched other than the woman that I married because it, it can have transgenerational impact. So when we do the analysis, that I, I want us to do about our families this night. Let us find out what is wrong. Let us find out from the Lord what is wrong. I went to preach in Brazil, as I will show you the second point quickly. So after preaching, the pastor now said, people will be coming one after the other. If I have a prophetic word, I should give them. It will help them. They are far away from home. So it's not only teaching, they want, they want prophecy. Say, okay. I prepared myself, I prayed, I sat down. Minister to one, minister to two, then this guy now comes. 
obviously the reason why the guy came was to test if I was good. I could pick. So he sat down and he put his face somehow. So I told him this, 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 this. He said, mm hmm So I now designed his heart that he came to test me if it is true that I have what they claim I have. So I, I told him the state in Nigeria he's from and told him that he was there when his father and his uncles killed a little girl and buried her behind the compound, the guys. And that that was the reason behind his endless poverty. Uh, the meeting ended. <laughs> Let me show you number two as we go. Are you still with me? The meeting, he, he, he said I shouldn't say more again that this, I, this and it was so true. He witnessed the bloodshed that was done. His father did that. He, they said, okay, since he was the oldest male among the children, he should come and witness it, that this is the covenant that will lead to their prosperity. Meanwhile, that was a covenant that led to the perpetual poverty that they are laboring on that till today. He even went abroad, but he's even there. The cause became more bitter. <coughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me show you number two. When I show you number two, then we'll continue tomorrow. I will show you three and four and five. After showing you these matters, then I will show you what David did. And what other people did in situations where there was famine. There is a certain prayer of inquiry that you are going to carry out. And it is God that will reveal what the situation is. When we now understand the situation, you are going to labor to carry out what is called restitution. Restitution is a legal initiative to remove the grounds that the accuser is using to ensure that judgments are meted out to your family. Exactly? When we do that, so in cases where that is required, right? The season over your family will change. You yourself, before this year ends, you yourself will come and testify. In some cases, the people can't even marry at all. In some cases, if there is anything like someone having an opportunity to prosper, he dies. Because it is inconsistent with the judgment that has been meted out. Come with me quickly. Come with me. Let's move to number two. And that is Genesis chapter 8, 4, beginning from verse 8. So the first case is a case of disobedience. And the second case is in Genesis chapter 8. No, sorry, Genesis chapter 4, beginning from verse 8. Please, Genesis 4, beginning from verse 8. Can you? All right. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. You know, I've taught this scripture many times here before, and I told you that it represents a court session. What I'm interested in is not to do the long teaching again, just to show you the judgment. This is God now judging Cain for killing his brother. You, it will surprise you to know that one of the things that can be responsible for famine in a family is bloodshed. And it doesn't matter what generation that bloodshed was carried out. It doesn't matter. If that is the case, you can find out through inquiry. You are not with me. You are not following me. Um, I'm, I, you see, I've been choosing my words carefully. Do you realize that in the occultic world, 
If they want to give somebody money, they require blood to do it. Okay, since everybody here has denied it, let us forget about it. It's okay. We, we, are, we have no knowledge of such things. Hallelujah. So I will leave it. See, when I say that, they say, eh? Is it possible? Let me try again. Maybe you will respond better. In our culture, we are aware of the fact that if someone is to be made to prosper, even to get elected positions, even to become someone prominent in society, even as much as becoming a permanent secretary in our civil service system. He goes to the villages and he meets the marabout and they take somebody from his family, pour the blood of that person on the altar and they use it to promote the person's rising. The very solution that Satan recommends that it's the way up becomes the way that will bring a curse. You will notice, are you there? Yes, in such families, when these kind of things are carried out, yes, for a time, that person will prosper at the expense of every other person in that family. You are going to see the presence of famine written over that family, and the people will be at the mercy of this one that they promoted through human sacrifice. And the thing about human sacrifice is that it is not the blood of Jesus that they used to do it. So it will expire. So the person can rise for four years. It can rise for eight years. In these eight years, the person will prosper. The person will have favor. There will be so much breakthrough, but it's at the expense of the family. The family is going to languish in poverty, in darkness. And then this person will now, out of his goodwill, will now be behaving as if he's a good person and then be providing crumbs for them. They say, hey, this is the man saving us. They are not aware that it is on his behalf that the entire family has been plunged under the influence of famine. The moment the blood that was used expired, the altar that is sacrificed that person to will begin to cry again. That means... You need to continue with blood. Sometimes you might sacrifice one, the altar will still cry the next day. It means that blood was rejected. It means you need to use another blood. Unknown to the family, as human sacrifice continues, it produces what we are going to see in this scripture. Hallelujah. Many people are not saying amen again. I have seen this from scripture. I have seen this from my practice of ministry. The counseling I have, I have done, the things I heard, if words can block the human ear, my own would have been blocked long time ago. There is no form of prophecy. You, bring, you say you will prosper next week. You are kidding. Even the person knows you are lying. The stronghold has been there. It has resisted everything that is positive. In fact, if you go to those, those climates, those environments, and say, okay, you want to bring development here, you okay, oh my God, this house is dilapidated. Can we, as you begin to attempt to change the situation, the spirit of famine that has the right <laughs> over the community, we visit that person that that put floodlight on the street will visit the person in the night because the person has strayed into his territory. While we were doing this, our contact, someone ran to my house. What is the problem? Why are you here? He said, they went to their village and put um, street lights. You know the solar street lights that we have around here? So they, they felt the place was dark. To... <laughs> To help the, the locals, they took solar, solar light and littered it across the road and everywhere and sit. 
Since the day they commissioned the last one, Satan has been on, been on their case. The, he ran to my house. How are we going to? But I said, you didn't inform me before you went and fixed the light. What? Why are you here? See, they did not investigate to find out that the land had something, a situation that was deeper than physical darkness. Before you do such acts of goodwill in those communities, you will need to labor in prayers for nine months. If you don't do that, you will become a victim of attempting to illegally evacuate the spirit called famine. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. And now thou art cursed from the earth which opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee as strength. You see this same matter. That your business can be programmed in such a way that it produces suspicious yield. Meanwhile, hard work and your effort in it, you are not sleeping. But there's a yield matter. He said, The ground shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall that be in the earth. Meaning that there is no location upon the face of the earth that can support your destiny. No location. So he is a wanderer, tries to settle in Makodi, tries to, you know, do something. One problem will come. They'll be looking for him to kill. Packs his things. He has moved to Lafia. Tries to settle there. The land rejects him. He moves to Kefi. And he keeps moving until in four years' time, we find him in Togo. He was involved in a riot, and that was where they killed him. His relatives could not withdraw his body because nobody can identify him. He has been a vagabond, seeking where he can survive, seeking where his destiny can be established. And in my little practice of ministry, I've met with such vagabonds that the earth have been commanded to fight them. And the best they can do all the days of your life is to wonder. Are you still with me? It is the Bible I'm reading. And in my practice of ministry, I have seen people in this condition. Now, I'm going to stop here as I ask the congregation a few questions. How I wish I could see the online community. But it's okay. I'll stop here for today and ask a few questions. Is there anybody in this hall tonight? And your situation is like what I described. You have seen an unnatural kind of hardship till this day and you cannot explain it. You are born again speaking tongues, but there is an unnatural kind of hardship that you have seen in your family and you do not know its origin. If there's anybody like that here, I just want a raise of hand. All right. Okay. Uh, put the hands down. Um, any of you not ashamed for us to discuss it on the platform? You are, you are okay with it? Sister, are you okay with it? Okay, come. I'm her with the microphone. It is the Lord's will that during the course of this fasting and prayer, these issues that are being raised will be dissolved. You will, you will see it. Oh, don't worry. What we are doing is diagnosis. 
When we are done with the diagnosis, we are going to go to solution. There is a way to war against these issues. Um, the protocol people, can you help us with some sitting arrangement on the platform? We will do a talk, a discussion moment for the next 15 minutes, after which we are going to mobilize prayer for our sister here so that she can enter into a new season in her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, are you with me? In my studies, I found out that we'll need to uncover these aspects, these issues, and then deal with them from the root so that people can be at liberty. And I know that there are many people that are listening online that can identify with such the limitations that we are trying to raise in this teaching. And you also are going to be implicated by the priesthood that is going to follow. And many destinies will be released from this stranglehold in the name of Jesus. Please, sister, sit down. What's your name? My name is Queen Iveri. All right. So I'm sitting here with Sister Queen Iveri. Um, are you, are you an indigenous of Benue State? Yes, yes. Okay, Sister Queen is from Benue State. Uh, what extraction of Benue State are you from? I'm from Gwe West. She's from Gwe West Sorry, local government. I'm from Taka. Taka local government. I'm In, from Gwe West. I'm married at Taka, so I'm usually she's, confused. No, this matter now is more related to Gwe West than it is related to, yes, that's to why Taka. I, yes. Oh, yeah. Now, I speak by the, by the Lord. Huh? This one is by revelation, okay? Yes. Now, um, can you give me or tell me why you think there is economic resistance on your family? And can you tell us, give us practical experiences that suggest so? Praise God. Hmm. First of all, why Papa was taking us through the teaching. I, uh, I was not here, let me say, in the spiritual realm. I was in my village. Okay, just today, while I was doing yes. the teaching, she was transported in her consciousness to her village, and that's the village in Gwe West. Yes, I was practically, I was having a practical remembrance of each and every that he was the, the teaching became like a, a means of transport that took her back into the village and then she began to label several things that have taken place and confirming the emphasis in the teaching that is coming up this night. My grandfather died in 2010 at the age of 110. And wow. I happen to be my grandfather's favorite child. Okay. My father is uh, his only child. Oh. As I'm speaking here, there are two people that know, know me very well that are here that actually have a true sense of it. So I'm not making up stories. Okay. So since 2010 that he died at age of 110, before my grandfather died, he actually told my father that when he's sick, the next sickness that he will fall, my father should not take him to the hospital again. My grandfather is like a date. Yeah, I, I, he, I experienced... He's established in the ways of divination. Even till now, if you go to my village... And call you his name. People will know him. My, my village is... If you are talking about Garua, let me call it. If you are from Garua, there are some people here, if you are from... That's place, and you call my grandfather. Is there anybody there. from there? Okay, we have someone from there. Yes. Yes, I'm 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 the grandchild of Chewe, Chenyenge, so it's it's not a hidden name. Is 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 a very terrible place. And um, now you see what we are doing here is removing the mask, so that we can tackle some deep matters. If you are not ready for the battle, for the war, let, don't start. But if you are ready, we will uncover the evil hand that is hovering in the family and will break the yoke of the devil. Amen. 
As of 2010, when my grandfather died, they didn't take him to the morgue. He was kept in a touch hut. And it was during dry season. And all the things my grandfather said before he died, I experienced them. He said there was going to be rainfall for a whole day. And we experienced rainfall in, for, a whole day. for a whole day. And before he died, my father was like a native doctor. And had, well, he was learning the ways of your grandfather. No, I wasn't, but... Your, your, your father? No, no, no. My father is not even home. But usually during holidays, I... In fact, okay, okay. I always go to the village during holidays and I experienced some of the sacrifices he did. Then they will use, they will either kill a goat, a sacrifice with a goat, okay. or um, a fowl. My, my okay. grandfather had more than 200 fowls. Okay. Like in the morning, they could open, you see, you know. So I experienced some of them. Some, if you have not been treated of such you will not eat but me i will always eat i will partake in you know let's say um if you're having headache and they treat you after everything they will say those that are in tea they will say um but i she too am i right i she too a she so even if i have not done that i'll be she too i will have to eat from it sometimes maybe the full chicken i will eat and now all the, of that your audience online you have people from India, people from Romania, people from Belgium. They may not know Shitua. <laughs> okay, so um, if they are going to do those sacrifices, they will make, uh, they will kill, they will shed blood, chicken, and sometimes they will slaughter the chicken and use the blood and the blood. pour on the pots okay. before cooking it. So sometimes I will even prepare it. Okay. And why they are doing it, nobody goes there except you might have partaken in it before. Before, okay. Yes. And while growing up, um, I got married in 2012. Okay. And by the grace of God, my family is, is, is experiencing a really dangerous famine. We have done our best. Like, I'm shaking. You people will not understand. Like, Please, listen. I, I'm, listen. I'm really, really... I'm really, really, should I say nervous or anxiety right now because... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just take a deep breath and then you'll be okay. She didn't know I will, be, I will call her out. I, I didn't even know when you said you because my hand, I took my hand just, the first time. Her I, hand was up. So I know I didn't plan for this. It's not easy. You will not understand. <laughs> Now, the story is that there is a serious famine that the family is going through. And I agree, and I relate to all the teachings. I was just saying it. I could. I, I, I do a lot. I do a lot. You see me rising. You see me going down. down. I do everything. Miss, Mr. Bra um, you guys will not understand. Oh, do you have an idea? You know her? Yes. Okay. So she will labor. She's hardworking. She will start doing something. It will begin to peak. And after a while, it to will drop down. down. Sometimes maybe you see me having dreams that I'm flying. You see me flying in the dreams. I'm flying from one place to another. I can... You see me well established. Give me two, three months. I'm down. I can have all the millions you can think about, but... If the, the highest I was able to manage 20 million comfortably was last year. And as of October, November, everything went. Everything I'm went. just trying to, like... Now, we are going to go into serious warfare. We'll use 15 minutes, and then you will see the gravity of this matter. Because we are going to employ the power of God. I just want you to see the gravity of the matter. That this matter is deeply steeped in darkness. And so, Papa, when okay. you talk about um, if one wants to do something in such village, they should pray for nine months. I sh those that were behind me, they, I said, wow. Because if you go to my village, they do not have water. They can, let's say in Makodi, imagine you are living in a place like Makodi to go and fetch water at... Uh, 
Taka Ogboko. That's what? how. And for some years now, I've been planning to dig a borehole Don't, for them. Calm down, sister. Exactly. So <laughs> it's when I heard that, sometimes you see me, I will make plans. The last time was not even up to a million, and I slept, and I don't know. I woke up, and I just said, you know what? I'm not doing it again. So imagine no, I you have will done do, but, that. But we will, we will do some things, then last, you, will, last you will go and year, do it. I, by the grace of God, I own the biggest perfume shop in Benue State. I used to have stock goods about let's say 15, 20 million. I'm just calling the show. I don't want to call him to scare. People know me here, so let it not be. Um, as I speak, I don't have goods up to 2 million in my shop. I sell fish, river fish. Um, so the anxiety in me is too much. I export fish in trucks in like, <laughs> right now I buy two or one carton of fish just to keep my, my customers. 50 million is too much to go down in. Two months is too much. And I don't know how somehow... Susan, please stand up. Uh, she, needs, she needs help now. She's... I don't know how. Can you see how practical these issues are? I don't know how I lost such monies and I tried to stand up again. Who is this Susan she's calling? So come and help her. And... Money goes out of You will stand me. up. Don't worry. You will stand Amen. up. You will stand up. It's, it's by God's will that you're on the stage tonight, on the spotlight. So, Susan, come help your friend. Um, we will begin some warfare, and it will be clear to you that Satan wants all of us poor. If you are not aware of it, you will find out tonight. Satan wants us poor. Please support your friend. Uh, such losses, such losses, um, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. Let her not go. We will, we will attend to her. Now, I have 15 minutes for prayer. 15 minutes for prayer. We are going to speak in tongues for five minutes. Oh, Jesus. Some, some yokes are about to break. Kulana Moseli Bahade. See, yokes are breaking. Satan was everyone poor, incapacitated. Yokes are breaking already. Yokes are breaking. See, I'm Yes, he Oh, see, I'm a Ilome Sufalama. See, I'm a monte. So, some people will be liberated in a moment. Kiba Bonte Liama Katobi La Seliva. Katuse Salambo. Laya Sina Mama. Kuria Simo. Silaboko Belaita. Oh, Helena, see you, Baba. Helena, see you, Baba. Helena, see you, Baba. 
Herina Salimonde la Bona. Oh, 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 Kusa sabalambo same. Hey, 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 mama. Oh, 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 de la conske bala kunda baba haya le la bosela se la mandele bamo se la mandele ba se anamode ay sina e mama Sinaye mama Sinaye mama Sinaye mama Sani na Let 
Semina like for Balamol. Semina like for Salai. Oh, 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 oh. Semina like for Sanamo. Semina like for Sanamo. La Hale, La Hale, Oh, hey, 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 Selimon Deri Abrasketo Bokoria Jeda Bokonte Balito Sketo Bila Shamon Teli In the name of Jesus. There is a woman in this place, you have been in debt for 12 years. There is a woman in this place. You have been in debt for 12 years. Now, I want to see that woman. A woman has been in debt. The Lord said there is a woman that has been in debt for 12 years. Everything you do, the Lord is, Lord is about to change your story. Now listen, you will not believe. Listen, okay, let's finish with her. Someone cast a spell on her that she will never, never come out of debt. But all her life she will spend in debt. But today, God is going to release his daughter. Yes. 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 Oh. 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 Here be man. This is a spiritual thing. Satan wants to keep us impoverished under the yoke of famine. Can we use them as a point of contact and say, Lord, restore. 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 restore.
We undo this spell of darkness, this spell of slavery, this spell of servitude. We undo it in the name of Jesus Christ. We say no more. No more. No more. No more. In Jesus' name. Now, three of you, come, come up. Let me find out how much you are owing. Um, so at the end of the service you bring three of them to the office let us discuss how to liberate them <laughs> we'll discuss how to liberate them alright so and uh, we Come on. Come, let's whisper. Right. So these ones, we're going to play their debt so that... The, 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 there's an anoint- I want visions are coming, but it's not clear. Can we can we go with this song? Let's take a flight with this song. Jesus, I, and by your name, establish authority. Jesus, Jesus. Sing by your blood. By your blood, you destroy principality. Jesus. on you and then in December we will find out. Okay? But listen, listen, I see a strange sight. I see the sight I see is a sight of a female little girl that was sacrificed in one of the families represented here tonight. The reason for the drought is that the blood of that little girl that was sacrificed has been crying over your family. 
and I know you don't believe me. So I will ask the Lord. You are here. Come. Don't hear me. Climb up, climb up. Jesus. Bring her up stage. Jesus. Can you labor? Can you labor in prayer? Are you are you sure? Do you have this information that such a thing happened in your family? Come on, come on. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. families here present have mercy have mercy can we pour out mercy can we pour, pour out prayers to secure mercy on their behalf pour out prayers right now pour out prayers now pour out prayers siyakombe la mahalatalia isose la medokoria presko falamande we ask so God that you might show mercy, that you might show mercy, that you might show mercy, that you might show mercy. Oh God, Ali Skopela Mahadila Atebo, Jenny Cambres Kofila Tale, Ome Salaboria, Ika Bantelimo, Escute Tabila Campelaya, Usateli, Aberia Mokosa Tala. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And we stand on behalf of all the families represented here. We ask for mercy. 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 Pour out your mercy, we plead with you. In the name of Jesus. We ask for mercy. 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 In the name of Jesus. Alright. If, if the Lord has helped, helped us, if we show his hand. The sign is that the anointing will come on two of them. The anointing will come on two of them. If you see that sign, then the Lord has sent us. Si 
So I break the curse in the name of Jesus. I say to you, famine, go backward. Go backward. Go backward. Go backward. Go backward. Go backward. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. In the families where marriages have been tied, conception has been tied down. In the name of Jesus, I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. In families where, oh my God, oh my God, I see a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire in the heavens, a fire descending from above. Like copa to name my sailor. Burn the keyboard. Oh my god. Ah. Ah. I see somebody about to be sacrificed in one of the families here. And the hand of God will arrest that person. Arrest that person. Arrest that person. You will not be sacrificed in the name of Jesus. That's it. There's a demon there. On the chest. Put your hand on the chest and pray in tongues. Yeah. Come out in the name of Jesus. We end the sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the bitter curse come upon that one that wants to use blood again to extend the shelf life of the presence of the devil in that family, in the name of Jesus Christ. The yoke is breaking. No more death. No more death. No more death. No more death. You know what I say? I see families where the deity, where they worship, is a serpent. I'm seeing families. The deity that they worship is a serpent. It's a serpent. It's a serpent. It's a serpent. The serpent wants to swallow. Wants to swallow. Swallow the spirit. When you are there. When you are there. When you are there. When you are there. When you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there. Now, those of you kneeling here, are you sure that there is a serpent, there is a deity? Okay, come up, come up. Come, up. come this way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. You are, you are too many now. Okay, what I will do, I will touch you just a little on your head. All right? Just a little. But my hand will remain on your head, even though I've removed it. Make sure I touch you. Jesus, 
I destroy the serpent. Don't worry, you will see it. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. His link, his yoke on your life will break. I destroy the serpent in the name of Jesus. Lose your hold, you ancient serpent. For I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are there, 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 when you are there. of you that I touch that you are still on your feet you can go back if I have not touched you wait just wait behind <laughs> oh, you can't see the serpent I see it I see it I see it I see it let her go 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 in the name of Jesus The demon is here. Put your hand here. Put your hand here. Pray in tongues. Yeah. You constrictor, ancient serpent, I see you. I receive commandments from the Lord Jesus Christ to dispossess you of your host. Be gone. All right. Just make sure I touch you. Those I cannot touch, you wait, okay? Yeah? If I have touched you, wait, wait, I'm, I'll pray. So the serpent will begin to give way. Step. The serpent is coming out. Yeah. Now you are free today. Give me your hand. The portion that was taken from you, I restore it. I speak beauty, grace, restoration into your life. You will no longer walk in the wilderness. Come into the spring. In the name of Jesus. Yes, if I've touched you, you can go. If I've, touched you, if I've not touched you, you can come. Alright, can we have the people in the 
electronic room. Put them up, put them up quickly. My time is almost spent. I've not touched you people. Just stay. If I've touched you, you stay, okay? Just two of you left. Just her. Is there anybody in that room that is implicated by the issues, some of the issues that I have raised? You notice that there is this farming, something is fighting against your possibility. What you would do so that I can identify you, just put that electronic hand saying I am the one you are talking about, that yellow hand. Just put it on the screen so that I can see you. And then I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And then the Holy Ghost is going to come into your room. It's going to come into your space. Right there. And a surgery, a spiritual surgery is going to begin where you are. Irrespective of where you are transmitting from. Oh my God. Now those of us in the room here, can you stretch your hands in that direction? And begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. No, 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 that's not the prayer. That's not. Begin to pray. Really pray. Really pray. Don't meditate now. Don't meditate now. It's time to pray now. It's time to pray. Assassino bo obrosketa mina kadia brandesi. Jebonta me, jebono compres cabalatoa. Escompe la manse salico. Raske sose na itala, raske tala babonde kentale, esobria la baboska tebina, anse bronde hete kala baboria, iskantelia, iskantelia, iskanta babonkela, isose la branta baboria, esamina kante bombori katantelia. In the name of Jesus. So I ask Lord that you stretch forth your hand on your people anywhere they may be under heaven. I arrest this spirit of reproach. I arrest this spiritual factor acting as a barricade, standing against the full potential of your people, such as have been resisted from marriage. Others have been measured in their financial possibilities. Now I ask, oh God, that your strong hand will go to walk in their lives anywhere they are in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the dew of refreshing, let it rest. Let it rest on them. 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 You will have a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so you can bring our sister. The last dose of the anointing will be released upon her life. And it doesn't matter the capacity of your grandfather and the things he locked in the realm of the spirit. Today, I call you forth. I call forth your finances. I call them from the kingdom of darkness. The things that were taken from you and were hidden in darkness. Say, Pabole, Diaket. Release her from your grief. Release her. Release her. Release her. Release her. Release her. Release her. And those things of hers that you have kept captive, kept in custody, I demand a release in the name of Jesus. Oh, let the shackles on your hands 
the fetters on your legs. Let it break. Let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let the blessing on your life rest. Let that flame of blessing rest. And let nothing put it out. So from the crown of your head. Oh my. Do you have oil there? Do you have oil? Do you have oil? Oh. Saikilo boko riyama. Jesus e naiko brande balaite. Sika presko tamina kandelia. Aboria siko bela mantelia. Basa boria. Zamono kumbre ele kadi. So if I touch you, you can go. If I touch you, saito kumbre. Weep not, weep not, weep not, weep not. Siato bereka, siato kundi. Hey, come. Weep not. Your day begins. Your time begins. Let the old things pass away. Let the new things come. Let the seed of greatness that have been seeking ventilation suddenly find the strength to burst forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Before the end of the year, some of you will see a sign. Because you came to stand with your friends, receive the anointing. Let grace come upon you. Yes. So the Lord instructs that I anoint you afresh. Do speak with God and your finances. Work of your hands will be blessed. In the name of Jesus, I separate you from the altar of your grandfather. In the name of Jesus, and I proclaim unto you. Such blessings that are upon the righteous from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I see someone in the congregation, you still have charms. You have charms. You have not disposed of your charms. You have not disposed of your charms. You still have charms. If you want me to bless you, such blessing that is stronger than the charms, first of all, you must agree that, yeah, I have in my possession, I have charms. And then you will bring it to me tomorrow in the office. I will destroy it. But if you don't want my help, no, there's no problem. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? You have charms. If you say, Pastor, yes, I need your help. This is how you will do it. I'll give you two minutes. I'll give you two minutes. So, accept that you have chance. And when you accept, you come to me. And then, we we'll make an arrangement on how to destroy it. You have chance. One minute come. I'm waiting for another one minute. You still have chance. You still have chance. If you accept, I will help. If you don't accept, no problem. You took the oil away. So the person with champs loves his champs. Your portion that was taken away. The spirit that was against your possibility, I arrest it. And the power that is in the name of Jesus, the voice of your ancestors that speaks in the night, I cut it off. And I decree that you are a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Oh my. 
By December, you will have become a fruitful vine. Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, for two minutes I just want to bless you father in the name of Jesus look upon your people with mercy oh my those that are into businesses surprise them inspire everyone here on what what to do to begin to prosper those that need to meet people those that need Employments, those that need favor, those that need, oh my God. Begin to move them around. Bring them into alignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, oh God, as I decree in your name, let the spirit that brings reproach be arrested. Spirit of backwardness be arrested. Be arrested in Jesus' name.